Well, hello everybody. I guess I'm still alive for the day. He uh, came in finally, said that all the tests came back that I was negative, negative. Didn't say my new teeth put in the other day. Anyway, negative, and uh, my throat sore too. Didn't have strep throat. Did you test right then for that? He said, what it sounds like, you got a severe sinus infection. And he said, if you gave me a bunch of medicine to take, well, I gotta pick it up the grocery store. And, uh, come on, people, really. I have to turn on the, <laughs> open the cattle gardens up. And, uh, spaced out just enough to get by. But he said he didn't think it was cancer. And that's what he said. He said nothing was positive yet, but everything looked good. Other than severe sinus infection that he... And I think he's guessing that that lab came back and said I can have strep throat. He said... Uh, this time of year, the sinuses are, you know, something else. I don't know that. The pollen, but I haven't been outside in a while. Of course, I snore with my mouth open. That helps make me have a sore throat. He called me in some antibiotics and a sucker that you can chew on or slick on or whatever for your sore throat. I said, well, he said, that might help. And uh, so I'm gonna wait another week. Basically, he said, if you ain't no better in one more week, I said, okay, what's that one more week gonna do for me? He said, that'll tell us, you know, if the sinus infection and everything else should be a lot better if I take the medicine. And I said, oh, I guarantee you, I'll take the medicine. They moved up the camera. And my air conditioner's humming. Yeah, it's still running, so I ain't worried about that. I thought to myself when I was sitting in there looking around, a uh, little lab girl came in, did a culture in your mouth with swabs and all that stuff. And I thought to myself, we was talking. And I said, you know what, all my life I've worked and done things for other people. Even went to school and got an education for other people, basically, because I didn't care for myself. I said, I've worked two jobs, 16 hour days, Owned two or three businesses, did it for other people. You know, everything for other people. And I'm thinking, it's time for me to do something for myself. I mean, I'd never, you know, I'd send my kids, wife, whatever on vacations. I'd take a couple of them, but, but mainly I had to manage, do everything for the kids that sat down there so it wasn't much vacation. And, uh, and I've been all over this world, so I haven't worked about going on overseas and nothing like that. I just want to, and I like to just sit comfortable on the ocean seaside, draw or paint or a lake or up in the mountains by Babin Brook. Just something for myself. And so I decided, just sitting in there, regardless of what, he don't think it's cancer, but he said he wasn't going to rule about 100%. But he said it was way down low in the category because he'd been wrong the last damn time. He said I had a sore throat for two years and ended up having throat cancer. So, but I said, you ain't gonna wait that damn long this time, I hope. He said, no, we won't wait that long this time. He said, I want you to get your eyes checked. He said, I need to, instead of you having a colonoscopy because of your throat collapse problem because I have no muscles in my throat since I had the cancer. He said, well, it's going to take a stool and uh, check that out and see how that is. And I said, okay, I'm not here. And uh, I told him, I mean, hey, <laughs> he's probably right. I, uh, my throat's awful sore. But, uh, so I'm going to take one day at a time, basically. That's all you can do. I'm going to go with people. Uh, you know, the planes closing. Um, 
but that's what I'm, I'm taking. I'll just, I'll just take one day at a time, take my antibiotics. I've got a prescription for it. And that numbs it sucker, which has got lidocaine in it, it's always got in it. So, ain't near as good as morphine, I told him. He said, yeah, but he said, it might. morphine is a little drastic for a sore throat. I said, well, <laughs> you know me, I don't want to feel no pain. I said, I wouldn't mind dying if you could get out of this world without hurting. He said, well, that, not very many people can do that one. But I thought to myself, I'm going to do things for myself, which is what I want to do. You know, and I ain't going to be radical or whatever. I'm just saying, just need more time, calm, peaceful, no worrying, no upsetting, just, just calm days, you know what I'm saying? what I'm going to do, but like I said, I'm going to go and paint, draw, might make some little journal, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do something I like to do. I like the idea you can do stuff without having to worry about how much you're going to get paid, when you're going to get your check, it's like running the business, uh, you know, i got to get the invoices in so I get paid next month, I like crap, you know, I don't worry about that anymore, so I shouldn't worry about anything else anymore. Uh, that's my theory. I'm going to go home and set on what's tough. Uh, I'm right up here where I used to work, up here by Western. I worked at this place and then I worked at the other plant. Come on, car, he didn't even stop for it's close to that turn right, left. You know, watch people. No, that's what I'm going to do. I've been working on my genealogy. And you know, like I said, I've been lied to for 100,000 years. I did a genealogy and found out what kind of ancestors I did have. I've been researching that. I've got who married who for way back to 14, 15th century or whatever. And I, been, now I've been researching my last name. And uh, just doing things I like to do. And that's another thing, never stop learning and always stay busy, my motto. And uh, so therefore, he told me, you didn't have to quit taking your blood thinners. He said, but I can understand why you did. I said, well, I got tired of spitting up blood. He said, well, that's because your throat is so raw. I said, yeah, but spitting up that blood scared me because look at the diagnosis for cancer, and that's one of the symptoms. He said, yeah, but it's also one of the symptoms in your case, since you have no uh, outer layers of your tissue in your throat, that, that can cause it to bleed quite often. It's like having a dry nose, you bleed because your nose is dry. Come on, people. You know, nobody knows anymore about a four-way stop. They know how to do a light. And then my son told me the other day, well, you need to read the new driving book. I said, he was talking about the, some of the laws has changed. We used to not be able to turn left over a double yard. He said, all that's changed. I said, I'm going to find out. I'm going to research it. But I don't even care. I still don't turn left over a double yard. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, I'm going to do some things I want to do. I don't know where I want to take a world cruise or not, or go visit a foreign country. I wouldn't mind going to Scotland. Yeah. Since I had figured out I had uh, Scottish ancestors and Irish ancestors, I might just take me a trip to England, Ireland, and Scotland and Wales. You know I'm related to the Queen by a marriage, or like her. Me and her share about a fifth great-great-grandmother. So, me and the Queen that's on there today. Only about six or seven grandmas back. They come from Jute, Jutland, which is the island uh, of Scott, uh, up by, which would be Denmark now. Germanians, up in the Germanian tribes by Denmark. They used to call it Jutland or something like that. Jutland or J-U-T-T-I or something like that. Land 
reach where the angles and the sections came from. But anyway, like I said, I've been reading a lot, just not doing much. I've been dabbling with my pain a little bit. I don't care. Uh, I'm a, I don't know where I should change my name. It's RV Lucky it should life it should be saying my adventures or my life. But everybody knows me by RV Lucky, so I think I'm gonna leave it alone. I do RV at go camping a little bit every once in a while. I didn't get to go this year, it just didn't feel good. The floods to get me from going it and all it. I didn't I needed a new starter on my truck, all that stuff, couldn't find a mechanic. You know, it's one thing after another. But this time, I'm just going to wait and see. Whoa! They're working on this road up here. And I'm not going by the drugstore because I already got a hundred odd bit to do. The prepper ain't got an antibiotic. He's in trouble already. I should show you. I've got a road. A 20 by 20 road. <laughs> you can't even get in the door. And it's not prepping, it's not hoarding, uh, hoarding, hoarding anymore. It's because uh, I got all kinds of crap. But one of the bedrooms is completely full of food in boxes. And uh, I'll show you. But like I said, I got over a ton of food. Here comes another big bug. There we go. How about I bit that? Yeah, the creeps can come through. But I don't need to prep anymore. I got enough prepping stuff at three or four locations. I don't need to buy any more RVs. I've got, well, I can't, let's see, the bus, the hamlets, my toy hauler, and my pickup that I'm driving now. You can sleep camp in each one of them. So I don't need another camping vehicle or bug out vehicle. I need to get well and start feeling better. Oh, time it is. Oh, man. Slow down, Lucky. There's people behind you. That's not a good stop, lad. So I think I'll just give it a chance. They're supposed to call me. That I, uh, he want me to check it for glaucoma and all that stuff. Cataracts, I don't know what he wants to know. He said that you, you got you getting so upset about the least little thing. I said, Well I don't like her. And I mean I know what pain is though. So therefore I said I panic. Uh, I put it off for probably two months, but I went last month, I didn't tell him I told him so. So part of that was my fault. So, I'm hoping he's, he's right about just a sinus infection. Just hope. Yeah, that goes. Of course, he's a pretty good doctor. He said, well, we can send you down and have an MRI and a CAT scan and a scope done and everything else. I said, he said, I know how you hate all that stuff because I did 17 weeks of chemo and radiation and both did me to a table. I couldn't even, the mask they had on my face was so tight. I couldn't even close my eyes or couldn't open my eyes once it was on. And uh, it was horrible. I think I finally threw that thing away. I kept it for 10 years. Just to remind me, I look like the, uh, the what was the name of that movie, The Mask, where the king put an iron helmet on a guy who was his twin. The name of it was. He said, other than that, he said, everything is perfect. Your blood count, everything is perfect except your complaint with the sore throat. He said, you don't even have a strap. I said, okay, but that don't mean nothing to me. He said, well, he said, we can kill the pain, but he said, I said, yeah, I know how to kill the pain. Stay so damn high, you don't even know where the hell you're at. I don't like that shit. I said, 
I don't, I want the paint to go away. He said, well, a little bit of it always be there. And I said, you're right about that. And I said, I can do that. And I said, where it gets where I can't swallow, that irritates the snot out of it. I gave my liquid diet and started eating baby food. I got my Indiana Jones hat on. You know, I looked in the closet and I actually went in a, a room back here in the back. And I looked at some shirts. I still got the tickets on. I've had them for five, six, seven years. I found a pair of polo tennis shoes I didn't even know to wear. I probably tried them on when I bought them. Didn't, have, didn't put them on since. So I put me a nice shirt on, tore the tags off of it, nice pair of shorts, brand new pair of shoes on, dug it, dug in my, you know where my hats are at, and decided to wear this one. Like I said, Dorian or something like that. My, you know, I used to have a horse ranch. Good. I hate damn horses. I hate cows too. Give a damn milk, got $20 a gallon, I'd buy a damn milk before I'd buy a cow. Uh, my kids were raised on a little acreage, one of them bug out acreages. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to go live in a bug out situation, live on acreage. Well, I'm going to tell you something, they would have to. Work like hell to support yourself on the damn acreage. It was great for the kids. They had ducks, geese, pigeons, all of them. Just over the and pigeons. Goats. Milk goats. I wouldn't buy a cow though. I ain't making no cows. Had horses. Boy, they were gathered in that hay about here. One side plowed up for winter wheat's already harvested, the other side started doing the hay. So I guess I better let you go. And I first before I stop and start, I want to thank everybody that gave me encouragement, the prayers, and everything else. Unbelievable people. It was nice, kind, and considerate. You know, that's what the world needs more of. It's nice, considerate, kind people. And it's just like, even if you watch somebody's video, if you ain't got something nice to say, don't say a damn thing. Just go on. You know, don't you know? Don't sit there and you know. Oh, you did, you're gonna take a better video. Or you're gonna do this now. What you do is you just you know. Thank you for sharing. Go on. You know. You know. A lot of them like oh, they like it. Uh, good music on them. They like uh, good editing. And, good camera shots and all that stuff. No, I think you can get that by watching any movie. I think what you really need is to know people and become acquainted with them. You know, and because uh, there's a lot of good people out there. A lot of good, considerate people. Well, I better let you go, though. I keep saying that. I better let you go. I'm going to go home. I'm going to eat with something. It's about 2 o'clock. I haven't eaten all day in case I want to pull some more blood. That ain't good for my diabetes, like you said. He said, you can't do like you did in college. We talked about that. He's talking about this guy starved himself for 150 days. He said, I told him, I used to starve for three days away in and I could go on the diving team and then I'd eat like a hog. <laughs> and then I'd have to starve next, next time twice as hard and so I could do my way in, you know, crazy things. Well, I'm almost home. I better let you guys go. Talk to you guys later.